Click the link below for a 30 day free trial of Audible. Yo! So I made a video on Yuji's strength in Jujutsu Kaisen a while ago, and originally I was gonna redo the video because I just think that my understanding of Jujutsu Kaisen has evolved significantly since then, as well as my script writing, and also, I mean, the video was shit. So today I wanted to give a breakdown as well as my personal opinion on where manga Yuji's strength lies. If you guys want me to do more reduxes of my previous Jujutsu Kaisen videos, let me know down in the comments below what you think, and uh, yeah, well, Without further ado, let's get into it. But before we start today's video, guys, please make sure you use code DAFFY10 at your next purchase at AnimeExpress.com. Please make sure that you get yourself something nice like a hoodie, a t-shirt, a Pokeball, or even like some anime-inspired lights, anything anime-related that you need. Please make sure you head on over there. Uh, link will be in the description below. Please make sure you use my code. That is DAFFY10. And yeah, let's get on to it. Starting off with Yuji's most prevalent talent in his corner is his extraordinary physical prowess. Yuji has been shown to have absolutely monstrous amounts of strength even for the world of Jutsu Kaisen at large. At just age 15, Yuji was surpassing both national speed and strength records almost effortlessly. Yuji has been shown to throw cars, leap from ground level to a second story bridge, and even in Shibuya was shown to throw the Shibuya 100 sign at a cursed spirit in the anime. Honestly, Yuji's most impressive strength feat personally for myself was in a blood lusted rage against Sukuna. Yuji managed to leap to the top floor of a building in a disturbing amount of time and threw a concrete wall at Sukuna. Sukuna was even startled by this strength and Sukuna has seen every single battle Yuji has encountered to this point and even he was like, oh shit. <laughs> For reference to this concrete wall, I'm guessing if Megumi is like 5'9", like the manga volume state, I'm estimating that this concrete block is to be about 7 feet tall and around 5 feet wide. With some quick mops, it is estimated that this concrete block that Yuji throws at Sukuna here is around 14.78 cubic feet of concrete, or about 2,187 pounds that he just chucked at Sukuna here. For reference, that is the weight of an average African elephant or a hippo. And if we take this to the power of 2.5 due to what the black flash buff is stated to do yuji's black flash would have about 223 million 677,323 pounds of pressure behind it or 1,553,347 psi for reference it takes about 520 psi to completely crush a human skull so uh yeah, you'd fucking die. Bro, if this little nigga fresh out of middle school were to full force punch you, you would quite literally be a pink mist before your brain could register it. By the way, this is just for power scaling shenanigans. Don't take this seriously. It's just, it's, it's not that deep. Yuji strangely has an affinity for the black flash as well, which is known to not be able to be activated by anyone at will. Being able to apply cursed energy to a blow within a millionth of a second is no small feat. It has been stated to hit a black flash means you are basically in the zone, in a flow state of sorts, and a black flash boosts the power of a blow, like I previously stated, by the power of 2.5. Yuji, after being taught what it is by Todo, was shown to have failed to do it once, then went on to do it four consecutive times, thus tying himself with Kento Nanami as the highest consecutive record. Now, is it weird how Toto basically told Yuji to do it and then he just probably did it? Uh, yeah, it's a bit co contradictory, considering that you technically aren't supposed to be able to do that, but I mean, you can just chalk this up to main character silliness. Strange how even Sukuna and Gojo didn't even consciously think about hitting their respective black flashes, but Yuji, for some reason, can. A bit tricky thing, isn't it? Yuji's durability is absolutely through the roof, as he is some sort of cursed womb mutation due to Kenjaku meddling with Yuji's birth. Yuji has been shown through sheer willpower to continue fighting with grievous wounds that ordinarily would make any normal person cease fighting immediately. Getting stabbed in both feet by Chozo, as well as having his liver pierced, did not wane him from fighting as hard as he could until Chozo took a chunk out of Yuji's shoulder and knocked him out. Even in later arcs, when Yuji is trying to convince Akari to join their cause and enter into the killing games with them, he lets Takari directly punch him as hard as he can three times in his face. Yuji comments that Hakari's blows feel different from a regular reinforced punch and that it feels as if he is getting hit by a serrated bat. This is the same Hakari who went and had a fucking oro 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 barrage with Kashimo on a shipping container. Now granted Hakari wasn't trying to kill Yuji here because he had no idea who he was but it doesn't make it any less painful. Hakari breaks Yuji's nose and sends him flying dozens of feet back and tells 
Megumi and Panda to take Yuji and get the fuck on, but it's surprising to see that Yuji was behind him already once again and is still pressuring him to join their cause. Once Sakura possessed Megumi's body, the very first thing he did was punch Yuji directly in the stomach and send him crashing through one skyscraper and the tops of three other buildings, and Yuji survived. Now, granted, Sakuna did the same exact thing to Megabi in episode 5 of season 1, but, uh, you know, artistic liberties with animation and all that. Yeah, 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 you, you don't care, but yeah. Yuji actually stood up from this punch and appeared to be mostly not affected, partly due to being bloodlusted at that time. As far as Jujutsu goes, Yuji is not predisposed to having any innate techniques. Yuji does not have access to things such as the Six Eyes or Euro's Sky Manipulation. Yuji was able to actually develop Divergent Fist, which is a technique that was born out of Yuji's bad habits with Cursed Energy Manipulation. Once Yuji strikes an opponent, a second impact follows, which basically makes for every punch that Yuji lands, a second punch follows shortly behind it. Two for one special on putting the pause on a nigga, basically. Yuji is able to catch opponents off guard with this and follow up with a different attack, such as when Mahito was going to attempt to decapitate Yuji by baiting him with exposed flesh, but he had no idea about Divergent Fist, thus throwing him off. But! <laughs> A major development that has occurred is that Yuji now has access to blood manipulation, what is the inherited technique of the Kamo clan. Chozo and Noritoshi Kamo both have this ability, and Chozo from what we have seen is the most proficient user of it we have in the modern day. Chozo in the anime was shown to directly cut a concrete ceiling in half that was underground, and Kenjaku explained that the initial burst of piercing blood, the speed is essentially at the speed of sound and slows down from there. Yuji himself was able to cleverly dodge Chozo's piercing blood by jumping off the floor and waiting until his feet hit the ground to burst at Chozo, basically kind of baiting him into firing his attack early. In the Shijuku showdown against Sukuna, at one point Chozo is incapacitated by Sukuna after having two orders of the Kakyoin special, and in the midst of Sukuna dueling Higurama, Sukuna blocks a piercing blood shot from out of the viewer and Sukuna's sight. He believes it to be Chozo that had already recovered and sent a shot at him, and we actually see that previously there is a small flashback where the heroes are trying to get a plan together for the showdown with Sukuna, and Yuji is telling Nortoshi Kamo that Chozo can't teach for shit, and his, advi his advice was much better. I mean, realistically, I'm just going to assume that Yuji is a bit stupid considering that Chozo's mastery of blood manipulation is light years ahead of Kamo's, and partly due to the fact that he's a cursed womb and he can kind of recycle his blood uh, just with his cursed energy, so he's basically like operating at maximum capacity for the most part. Now, because of this, it, most people already knew that this piercing blood that was shot at Sukuna was Yuji. I called it, many of the YouTubers called it. Um, people were hoping for some reason that it could have been Chozo. Why? I have absolutely no idea, but yeah. And as Yuji is in the heat of battle with Yuta against Sukuna, Yuji takes a devastating volley of cleaves to his midsection and spits blood directly into Sukuna's eye. And then very shortly after this, Sukuna is surprised to see that the blood that Yuji spat on his face explodes and Yuji's hand is extended out thus confirming that Yuji now has blood manipulation. This is absolutely crazy for Yuji, as with this, he now has more things in his kit that allow him to be more than just a punch kick merchant. Yuji now has a small degree of hacks at his disposal, with the most important thing being range. When it comes to Yuji's fights throughout the series, every single one of them involved has him getting close and using his monster strength and martial arts prowess to his advantage. Even in the current battle, he still needs to get in close, as it is a requirement of the current victory with this fight. But now, with range now on his side, Yuji can have a better advantage of closing the distance safely. Now, it appears to be a supernova that hits Sukuna's eyes here. Now, I'm not entirely sure if Yuji has access to slicing exorcism or flowing red scale, uh, but that is at least two things that we know. We know, we know that he at least has something similar to supernova and piercing blood. It is still unclear what the gloves that Yuji has on his arms are, but Gege has shown them in enough promotional material at this point for me to think that he will give an in-depth explanation for them at some point. Blood manipulation has tons of uses, so hopefully we get to see more of what Yuji can do with it later on. Hopefully, hopefully, right? Now, quite possibly the biggest development for Yuji fans such as myself comes in Chapter 248, where after Sukuna at this point has slashed open Yuji's stomach, Sukuna notices that Yuji is back on his feet and fighting with his stomach wound fully healed. What this means is that in the month of training that our heroes did through the short time skip, Yuji successfully learned reverse cursed technique. 
For those that don't know, reverse curse technique is an extremely difficult curse energy application where two sources of curse energy within yourself are multiplied, thus creating positive energy. This positive energy is most commonly used to repair flesh and human bodies or even one's own curse technique itself. Yuji is simply a dynamo at this point in the story, and while yes, it has been stated that Yuji will not stop if it is only pain heading his way, Yuji now has a way to repair his body and keep himself in the fight if it comes to a war of attrition. Now against someone such as Hakari whose reverse curse technique is fully automatic, then yes, he will start running into issues, but now that Yuji has things such as range and can heal himself relatively quickly, as he's been shown to take a flurry of Sakuna slashes and relatively keep himself okay, this is now huge for Yuji. Now granted, this is a Sukuna who is running the gauntlet against fucking everybody and, and, and going pretty, pretty, you know, pretty, pretty well in my king's favor here, but this is still a W. And Yuji's reverse curse technique is not perfect at this point in the stories either, but just for discussion's sake, I'm going to assume that it's perfect and working uh, because we've shown that Yuji just recently learned reverse curse technique and he's kind of haphazardly repairing himself when basically the stitches are coming undone and a lot of the internal wounds that he suffered, they're starting to become broken again. So he still has work to be done. Now, another major thing that Yuji has in his back pocket is that we understand that Yuji has the ability to punch or impact and damage souls directly. This is specifically what gave him the edge over Mahito, besides the fact that Mahito could not get Yuji in a domain expansion out of fear that Sukuna would kill him as Sukuna gravely injured him prior. It's still kind of vague what being aware of the shape of your own soul means, uh, but Mahito states that because Yuji had Sukuna in his soul that Yuji is someone that does this now. And so any punch or damage that Yuji does is actually lethal to Mahito, especially things such as Black Flash, which is how he defeated him at the end of Shibuya. What this means for killing game players that, you know, obviously are hosted in different uh, individuals' bodies and being reincarnated, I would assume that Yuji would do more damage to them, but Yuji didn't run into anybody that would uh, kind of give any credence to this. Higuruma wasn't someone that, Higuruma was just a regular sorcerer. I don't believe that helicopter people were reincarnated sorcerers. I don't even know their names. I have no idea, and I know you don't either. <laughs> So, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Now, this is also very, very good uh, in his fight against Sukuna currently because the goal is to attempt to split Megumi's soul and from Sukuna's, drag him out of that darkness that he was sleeping in for months and actually basically exercise Sukuna like a demon. Yuji is exceptionally strong at this point, but he still lacks some firepower, specifically when it comes to domain techniques and barrier things. That's what really kills Yuji here. He's, he's, he's getting there. He's getting there. But even something such as small as a simple domain would really go far for Yuji and he just doesn't have that yet or he could and it just hasn't been shown yet I would hope so I mean shit I, before Gojo died I hope he at least was like hey this is what falling blossom emotion is hey this is what simple domain is you probably should know what this is well I mean I guess that isn't true because I, this Gojo straight up did falling blossom emotion and then everybody on the screen was like what the fuck is that that's the big thing with a lot of these Jujutsu tech kids is that they don't have any of these GG easy moves right you have Urami with like a frost calm you have Jogo with like a a maximum meteor you have sakuna's entire domain you have his you know uh you know i'm gonna say Fuga. like all these different things but a lot of the jiu-jitsu tech people don't have this except yuta use out yuta's obviously obviously an exception yuta is second to gojo you can't really argue with this granted how strong yuta's domain is J yuta now has access to jacob's ladder as well i mean shit <laughs> It really just depends. So a lot of these like versus battles and things like that are gonna be very interesting for me to read, especially as a Yuji fan, but he's still just, he's, he's not he's not there yet. He's not a Midoriya, you know what I mean? He's not like top 10 in the verse within like two arcs, you know what I mean? <laughs> and to wrap this off, we have something that we're still gonna be in suspense for for a pretty long time. I have no idea when Gege is planning on bringing this back. I trust Gege, I, I think Gege knows what he's doing to wrap his story up. Uh, but we have this uh, body switch technique that that Kusakabe trained Yuji with. This is the first and only time we've seen this ability. Maybe it's a backup plan just in case that like they can't get Megumi out and they're gonna maybe have Yuji swap places with Megumi instead of exercising him because he's done already. He's been a vessel for Sukuna already, but I, 
I don't really know. We still have no idea what this is. We still don't know exactly what Yuji did to be able to gain these blood manipulation abilities. Um, now it's implied he's he has said I'll eat anything, and then you know, obviously uh, Yuki gave him some books to read. Obviously studying. Uh, so people are thinking that Yuji ate some of the other curse wounds, and even Chozo believes that oh they'll live on in you, implying that Yuji you know ate some of them. Um, but I don't know. Manga Yuji is certainly a powerhouse, man. But is he? he? He's getting there, man. He's getting here. Give me like four chapters of Yuji being able to show us what he can do. Because it's kind of hard because Sukuna is the strongest in history, right? But like when we compare Manga Yuji to some of these other culling game players, like I don't know. I would love to see Manga Yuji versus like Ryu or Uro or shit, even Kashimo. I would actually. Ooh, how would that fight go? Manga Yuji versus Kashimo? I don't see I slander Kashimo every chance I get but I, I, I feel like he would take it especially if he hits that second form that he has I, he might be a little too fast for Yuji he might be uh, I don't know maybe it's been boy death you guys and I will see you in the next video and make sure you take care of yourselves have a good one peace